and my heart is filled with praise. Can I get a witness tonight? Everybody say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Because, because you care for me. In such, in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, all over the house, lift your hands and say, I love you, I love you, yes I do. I love you, hey, I love you Lord. Say, be Say my heart, my heart, my mind, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me, you paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary, the God Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up, yeah. the cross to the grave and then somebody said early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand anybody come to worship him tonight oh I know it's baptism but it's also a time of worship we've come to worship him because he's a good God and his mercy endured forever anybody come to praise him tonight anybody thankful tonight give God some praise Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your
your mercy and your grace. We thank you, O God, for this time that you've allowed us to come to gather together, that those who would be baptized and those who would receive the right hand of fellowship, let's thank you for each and every one of them. Now, Lord, as we go into this service, we pray that you might inhabit the praises of your people, that you might be lifted up. We thank you for all things. In Christ Jesus' name we pray, and we do say amen. We'll be led in our scripture by Reverend Joseph Brown. I will be reading into your hearing Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? He replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Gonna take a few moments and allow take a few moments and just allow those of you that are sitting behind the poles if you'd like to come in front as we prepare for baptism I want to encourage you to come on down those of you that are behind the poles just before we begin we're going to encourage you to come on down there's plenty of room to my left and plenty of room to my right I'm going to invite those that are outside and behind the poles to come on in as we prepare our hearts to worship God through baptism Anybody glad to be here tonight? Come on, let's bless him in this place. Come on, let's bless him. Amen. This is the day the Lord has. Water there that we have a photographer just to my left. We're going to ask that you would not disrupt the worship experience with photography. The picture will be made available to your family, and I promise you it's a better shot from up here than you can get from down there. 
and we want to thank you for that. As always, we thank you for not taking video. This will be online and forevermore on video, and you are more than welcome to watch it in that context. But what we do want you to do is celebrate with your brothers and your sisters as they come into the water. If you can celebrate for a graduation, if you can celebrate for a prom, there's no greater graduation than from death unto life and from darkness unto light. And so we want to encourage you to share as we prepare our hearts for baptism. At this time, we begin with a we'll begin with a sprinkling. Good evening, Enon, and welcome to our baptism service this evening. We welcome the family and friends of the, the candidates this evening. Our first candidate, Brielle Robinson. Brielle, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Peyton Laws. Peyton, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Parker Laws. Parker, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Paige Laws. Oh. Paige, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son. Sister Shiani Campbell. Shiani, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Sister Brittany Cutler. Brittany, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, 
LukeJoyceMoney.com will be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Aaliyah McIntosh. Aaliyah, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Carly West. Because you're back, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have Brother Aiden Green. Because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Brother Richard Dixon. Richard, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have his wife, Sister Leslie Dixon. Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. the Son, and of the precious Holy Spirit. Oh, 
we have Sister Kristen Harvey. Kristen, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister April, Ryan, Shannon. Sister Ava Ray Hilliard. Ava, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Sierra Austin. Sierra, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Lauren McMillan. Lauren, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Armani Mincy. Armani, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Nariah Oglesby Moore. Nariah, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have another Nariah, Sister Nariah Polk. Nariah, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Naya Thomas. Naya, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Oh. 
brother Cameron Burrell. That you have done. Cameron, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Brother Abdullah Daniels. Abdullah, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Issues of my heart. We have Brother Quadir Johnson. Dear, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Oh. We're going to encourage those of you that are behind the poles, if you'd like to come forward, we would love for you to come forward. But while we're switching out deacons, we want to encourage you to come. Go on. Sister Edie Boyce. This is Edie. She's part of Vina. She's down from New York to be baptized. Amen. Okay. Edie, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. from the state of Virginia, we have Sister Brittany Boyd. you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Kayla Green. Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have 
sister Amina Harris. Amina, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Bria Holden. you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Shamir Holmes. Shamir, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Shadeen Holmes. Shadeen, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Sarlene Jones. Darlene, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have From Sister now. Nicole Lundy. Nicole, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. A native of Philadelphia, but a resident of Washington, D.C., Sister Camille Meekin. Because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Roxanne Wilmer Clark. Roxanne, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Crystal Wright. Crystal, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Vanessa Bess. Vanessa, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Ori Alexis Frazier. Because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Jasmine Hall. Because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Oh, we have Sister Dale Moore. you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sierra Robertson. because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Sister Janae Williams. Janae, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. For we have Brother Wesley Barnes. Cloudy days are gone. Brother Wesley, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Oh, we have Brother Thomas Clark. You
Brother Thomas, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Love you. We have Brother Bruce Dixon Jordan. Brother Bruce, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. God and God alone. We have Brother Isaiah Gaddy. Brother Isaiah, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Brother Stephen Mordecai. Brother Stephen, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Brother Preston Parker. Brother Preston, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Our God. We have Brother Derek William. Brother Derek, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. We have Brother Craig Nathaniel Vaughn. Craig, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pastor Waller, our last baptism candidate for the evening is Brother Tim Moy Barrett. Timoy, because you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we joyfully baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the precious Holy Spirit. Just want to tell you, Lord.
God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for those coming into the waters of baptism. We thank you for the opportunity to watch you work, oh God. And we thank you for the opportunity tonight, now, God, as we move forward in worship, that we might hear a word from you. Bless the preacher, oh God, and bless the, the moment, God, that if there is someone in here that does not know you in the pardon of their sins, that they might come asking, what must I do to be saved? Lord, should we all be of the household of faith, we pray that you would be the Holy One of Israel that inhabits the praises of your people, Lord, that as we, we, we worship you, you would enter this place, oh God. Be reckless with us. Have your way, oh God. We'll be ever so mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. It's in the matchless, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ, and for his sake we do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen.
of God say amen. You love the Lord say amen again. Glad to be here tonight say amen one more time. Amen. We bless and thank our God for baptism. We bless our God for this Passion Week as we celebrate the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Anybody just glad to be in the house tonight? Amen. Come on. I said it before, I'm not mad when Philly feels that it's Ramadan. I'm not mad that Philly feels when it's Purim or Hanukkah. But I declare, Philly ought to feel it when the people of God gather together during Holy Week to celebrate that he came into Jerusalem, prayed in a garden till sweat like drops of blood came from his head, or tried in an unjust court, up on a cross, buried in a grave, they ought to feel it when we gather together to celebrate that truth. Amen, amen, and amen. We bless and thank our God for tonight. It's baptism night, and we thank God for those that have come in, and uh, you'll hear when we do the right hand of fellowship. There are persons here from Virginia, from Washington, D.C., from Puerto Rico, from Alabama, amen, and those that are online, we bless God for you. What we have said to those that are online, uh, it is possible to be a part of this uh, household of faith. We do ask uh, that you make the journey for baptism, and that is exactly what some of these persons have done uh, to come here just to be baptized, to be a part of the Venon experience, and so we bless God for that. And we honor you and honor your commitment. Please remember uh, that we are in uh, revival. We did not, was, was anybody blessed by the play on Sunday evening? Amen, amen. Uh, the Mary's at the cross. And so we did not give a benediction. We'll not give a benediction tonight. It is not over uh, until Sunday when he gets up. And so we bless God for that. All of this is a part of our revival experience. And so please don't forget that on Thursday night, uh, that's, that's homecoming. That's Monday, Thursday service. The sons and daughters who are pastoring uh, in their churches are going to come on back. And he's here this evening. Reverend Stephen Mack is going to be our preacher. And so we bless God for him. And uh, the rest of them are going to be here. And then on Friday, our Community of Grace dinner. Also, uh, the seven last words. Now, I did make mention... Uh, that on Saturday morning, we have our normal prayer from 8 to 9. At 10 o'clock, I'm asking at least one parent and the child who is a rising junior or rising senior interested in the uh, uh, internship possibilities that exist at the church over the summer. Now, I did say we were going to be in the uh, sanctuary, and I was told by Minister Waller that they will be dancing in the sanctuary at 10 o'clock. So we're going to be in the choir room. We're going to be in the choir room. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock. Uh, and these are the, op the internship opportunities for rising juniors and rising seniors. 
you'll have an opportunity. Uh, my, our goal is around 25. We have the ability to do about 25 uh, young people. Uh, and that is you'll work for Enon, but your internship may be here at Enon. It may be at Eastern University. It may be at Community College. It may be in another context. Um, and we're looking to grow it from there. And so I am grateful uh, for our deacons and grateful for you as a church that makes that possible. Also, uh, many of you will know the law firm, the Tucker Law Firm, Joe Tucker, uh, gives leadership to that law firm. He has made a significant investment in us to make that happen as well. And we just want to call his name and we thank God for him. And so, uh, but that, that was all pre uh, preliminary because now it's time for the word of God. Amen. It's preaching time. There is a preacher in the house tonight. Amen. Amen. I never get tired of telling certain stories about Bishop Keith Reed and among those stories, uh, you know, when I came to Philadelphia 30 years ago, there was already this move of God that was happening in the city of Philadelphia called the Sharon Baptist Church. I mean, that over on Catherine Street, before they got to Wynwood, people were lining up outside the church and wanting to get inside the church. And what was so significant about that is that uh, after a little while, when we began to grow, um, I couldn't find anybody to help me understand what was happening. There was such there was such insular attitudes in terms of no one willing to share their own journey. And I need you to know that Keith Reed opened up every book for me, opened up every opportunity for me to begin to understand what was happening here. And then you all will remember those two years when we shared the Leah Chorus Center. I will not forget that because we had a parking problem. They had a whole new building, and he was still willing to partner with us to do the Leah Chorus Center. He has been a friend and brother for all of these 30 years. Uh, and I just bless God for that and for the witness. And so we are grateful. Uh, that tonight the, the bishop of the Sharon Baptist Church, my friend and my brother, the coolest Negro on the planet, Bishop Keith Reed, is here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Won't you lift your right hand and say, Bishop Reed, preach. Choir's going to come. Bishop's going to preach.
Amen. Amen. This is a day that the Lord hath made, and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. To our resurrected Lord, who is alive and doing well, we give glory, honor, and praise to, to the angel of this house that we recognize and I realize is a brother from another mother. Dr. Allen Waller and his lovely wife, my sister, from another mother. Uh, we um, have, through the years, God has forged a relationship that um, has become second to none, I think, in the city of Philadelphia as well as abroad. Oh, I'm sorry. You please, you all may be seated, if you can, if you will. Oh, I'm, you might have to stand back up when I read the scriptures. Is that what it was? You, you was trying to tell me, okay, you're fine with all that. Open the Bible up and say what you're going to say so we can sit down. I got it. I'm sorry. I missed that. I missed the cue. But again, I want to thank him for this opportunity to be able to share with you all on this auspicious occasion. It is quite exciting to um, set aside a time where we uh, celebrate those that are new in the family and receive some of those that may have become a part of the family. It is truly, truly a time of celebration. And tonight, uh, I just basically, um, I'm, I'm trying to preach the occasion. And um, we are celebrating those individuals that have gone into baptism. And um, now I'm wanting to walk in the newness of life. Uh, as coming to Christ and the whole experience is spoke about in scripture of being like a baby without remaining a baby The whole issue of being like a baby is different than being and remaining a baby. Um, so I want to bring your attention to the book of First Peter. First Peter chapter 1, a portion and then a portion in chapter 2. And let's see what God means about being like a baby without being a baby. First Peter chapter 1, and if you look at verse 23 to 24, 25. Chapter 2, 1, two, one through 3. You'll find these similar words there from the New King James Version of Holy Writ. It reads as follows. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. If you look down at verse number uh, 24, it will tell us what the word of God is and how it is not like the corruptible seed that born that we were birthed with the first time. It says, all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Chapter 2, if you would, and look at these three verses. Therefore, based on the word of God abiding forever, that word that was preached unto us. Therefore, 
laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Here it is. As newborn babies desire the pure, some people say the sincere, translations say, pure milk or spiritual milk of God's word that you may grow thereby. Amen. The word of God to the people of God. There are three things that Peter says to you and I when it comes to this whole salvation experience and those that are new in the faith that have gone down in the water you need to know that what God does oftentimes in scriptures is that he will take that which is natural to illustrate something that is much deeper in the spiritual. Throughout the Bible, there are passages that use metaphors. A metaphor is something that we have come in contact with, we are familiar with, and what God will do via Jesus or one of the apostles, they'll take that metaphor and spit it on his head and make it mean something more than what it originally, um, what it was originally designed to be. So it is in this particular passage of scripture that we're in in the book of First Peter, where he is writing to somewhat new converts, but they are experiencing an aspect in their salvation that they may not have never bargained for, and that was they were being persecuted because of who they had come to believe in and what that means to believe in the one that has converted you and changed your lives. What he says in 1 Peter chapter 1 is he says, that when it comes to being like a baby, you need to know that there are some things that there is a correlation between the natural and the spiritual. There is a thin line between the spiritual and the sensual. But they both can run on the same tracks and if you follow it, it'll take you somewhere. Here it is, he uses this term pertaining to a baby, and he says this, that one thing you need to know as a child of God is that babies are delivered. That little baby over there just helped me out there a little bit. He said that babies are delivered. Notice Peter says, being delivered born again, not by natural or corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible seed. Uh, Y'all did read that with me in chapter 1, I think it was around verse 23, having been born again not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed through the word of of God which lives and abides forever. Babies are delivered. But babies have to go through a process before becoming a baby and before the delivery of a baby. I told you there's a thin line and oftentimes a correlation between that which is spiritual and that which is also natural or sensual. So how does a baby get to a point of being delivered? I love preaching here at E9 because y'all keep asking the right questions. The reason and how that takes place is usually a man, a woman, husband, and wife 
what they normally do is set up a time for them to get together. Not only do they set up a time, but normally they set up a place. And when they set up a place where they will rendezvous at and the time that they will be there at the place, usually also what takes place in that process is that the atmosphere is set. Normally, they play certain kinds of music. <laughs> if I'm wrong, don't say amen. Uh, it's usually a place and a time, and when they get there, they set the atmosphere by playing certain kinds of music. And when they get there, they also come dressed for the occasion. And in the process of dress for the occasion and the music is flowing and it's setting the atmosphere, that is called the period of arousal. During the period of arousal, they get aroused. And in the process of getting aroused, you know, oftentimes ovulation will take place and then it comes the time of sexual encounter and then there is a release of the seed of a man that hits the egg of a woman and then as a result of it, nine months go by and then there comes a baby. I told you there's some correlation and there's some similar uh, simulation and, and, and there's some, uh, you know, atmospheric stuff that takes place in the natural, but it's also typical in the spiritual. Because the church is considered the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ has and they set up a time to come together to rendezvous. That time is usually on Sunday morning. And when that time comes together for them to rendezvous, usually we come to the church dressed for the occasion. And then as the choir begins to sing, it changes the atmosphere. It sets an atmosphere of arousal. And you will hear when that period takes place stuff like, Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Then the man or woman of God will stand up behind the pulpit, open the word of God, which we just read tonight is the seed of God. And when that seed is spoken of and it hits someone in ovulation, and when it's all said and done, they come out of the wound of the woman, but out down the aisle of the church. So you have been born again. You have been delivered into the family of God. And you do know that when babies are born, babies cause for us to literally get us to give them not what they want, but what they need initially, and that is called attention. When all four of my children were born, and praise God, I had the privilege of being in the delivery room. When they were born, came out of their mother's womb, we did not put them in that little incubator, uh, incubator <laughs> little glass bed. And I went over to my daughter and my son. I said, listen, I'm your daddy. Here's my card. Call me when you get ready to come home. If you believe that, I'll sell the Benjamin Franklin Bridge to you. No, the first thing that was done is that we had to give them some attention. And this is what I noticed that when they were delivered and when they were born, they came into the world with all this stuff on them. It's called afterbirth. And, and the nurses, they began to wipe it off of them and they 
put the suction up their nose and their throats to clear out what was gagging them. As long as they were in the womb, they were fine. But when they came out of the womb, they could no longer live with the same stuff that they lived with in the womb. It was when they came out the womb, they have to take that stuff off of them because they have been born outside of the womb into the place called the world. You have been born again you have a lot of afterbirth on you from the world and the world has been gagging you blinding you stifling you but God's people will take the word of God and wash you so that you can function at some level of normality and I found out that Babies not only need attention, but babies have accidents. I know mine do. What I mean by accidents is that they would urinate and secrete stuff from their buttocks. And I noticed something about that, and I know some of you know this, but I need you to see the correlation between that which is natural and that which is spiritual, is that oftentimes baby will, babies will do something, and, and one of the things that they do is cry. They, they, they really do. They, they cry. And, and sometimes they... For the most part, they only cry for two reasons, but I'm going to give you the one reason on the first point of babies being delivered and they need attention is because when they have an accident, you know, oh, you know, we say, oh, they had a little boo-boo, you know, well, nothing all in cute about the boo-boo uh, because the smell of it was not as attractive as they look. But, but, but nonetheless, if you notice when they either urinate or they have a bowel movement, they can't stay in that state long because they even get irritated. <laughs> and they'll start crying and telling you, hey, I need some help. I did it, but I can't get out of it. I, I need somebody bigger than me, knows more than me, to help me get out of it. I just say to some of you new converts, you that have been born again, and it wasn't long ago that you have been born again, you will have the propensity and there will be great possibility that even now being delivered and born again, that you will have some accidents. You will make some accidents. You will find yourself in some accidents. I'm sorry. Accidents is called sin. You will fall in sin. You will cause sin. You will do sin. Don't get quiet on me. Don't get mad at me. I'm just simply saying even John says in 1 John chapter 8 and uh, chapter 1 verse 8 and verse 10 he says he that say that he has no sin he's a liar and the truth is not in him. He that says that he does not sin he says the word of God is not in you. You are self delusional. So child of God, when you find yourself in an accident, the proof that you are a child of God, you don't like being in the accident that you may have found yourself being in. So what you do to get out of the accident, 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you, clean up that accident from all all unrighteousnesses. Babies are delivered. Uh, uh, babies, I promise you, I, I won't be long. Uh, babies 
also have desires according to this verse in this passage it says as newborn babes or like a newborn baby they desire milk and he says so ought we like a baby not being a baby but like a baby we ought to desire the sincere milk of God's word. My sisters and my brothers, I told you there are two times that babies cry. One is when they're in a mess and two is when they're hungry. They will cry. Yes, they will cry. In my personal experience, my wife, um, in the first part of bringing home my children, she would have to breastfeed them. And um, I, I, I really appreciated that during the, the night hours. Um, I wasn't able to help. The only thing I would do and could do is I would go get them. I would even change them, but I would bring them to her. And I will look, make sure everything's all right. Then I would roll over <laughs> and go to La La Land. Then she got wise and other mothers started informing her, you know, you don't have to do this that way. There's a thing called a pump. <laughs> and when that was introduced, I was rebuking and binding demons. Because not only did I have to wake up and get them, I had to take we had a little refrigerator next to the bed, and with the milk in there, I would have to put it in a thing of water, and this thing would heat it up. And, and I was holding the baby, our child, and I did what I, you know, put the nipple and fed the baby, and she would roll over. <laughs> And, and go nighty night. But what was interesting was that when the baby would cry, they, they just wouldn't cry one time during the day or one time during the night. They would cry every time they got a craving. for that milk so we could not just feed them once a day their appetite caused them to have a craving for that milk more than once a day sometimes it was four or five times in a day that they would have these cravings and we had to keep feeding them until the craving was satisfied and then after it was satisfied they would go to sleep they would be pleasant while they were up but the minute that craving kicked in again they would let you know without any hesitation reservation arbitration or negotiation they would cry because they just had this craving for that milk. It's a tragedy when you say that you are a child of God that has been delivered in the family of God and you only want to hear or listen or read the word of God one time 
time a day or one time a week and that's just on Sundays and you can live off of that until next week it's something wrong with your spiritual digestive system because when you are born again you have a constant insatiable desire to know the word of God to read the word of God to be taught the word of God for this world is hungry for the living bread lift the Savior up for men to say do not doubt the word that he said I'll draw I I'm sorry what's the just want to know what's your appetite like? Gotta hurry. Babies are delivered, babies have desires, but according to this passage, too. Babies get developed. It's right here. It's the next phrase after he says, desire. One translation says, crave for the spiritual milk of God's word that you may grow thereby. I'm just going to put about a dollar in the meat and park right here and I'm going to go take my seat. Um, if you notice that babies don't remain the same size. I was looking at my niece's poo's little, little son. Um, I, I saw the picture when he was in the arms, and now he's all over grandma, and you know, trying to run around. I, I promise you, that is a direct result of what that baby's eating. You can correlate that when they are fed properly with the right kind of nourishment. It's in the body and the DNA to, to grow. You can't keep laying flat. You can't keep having a bobble head. You know, you can't just be scooting around, crawling. No, after a while, they'll, 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 they'll be, you know, down on the ground and they'll take their their, their feet, their, their feet will be on the ground and they'll lean forward on their hands. And then they'll do this. And they may, boop, fall right back down. No parent in their right mind will ever run to that child and said, there it is again, you done fell again. <laughs> For goodness sake, stay down. <laughs> don't get up, don't, don't even try it again. Just, it's so frustrating seeing you fall every time you try to stand up. I know I never did that. When, when they fell on that little bottom, I would go over to them and I would put two fingers out and they would grab my two fingers and I would raise them up and then I would walk them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it, baby. Come on to that. Come on. Come on. And then after a while, I would let my hands go out of the fingers out of the hand, and they would stand up. And then all of a sudden, they try to make a step. And sometimes that first step, they fumble. 
And I would catch them oftentimes before they fought. And I never said to them, you just need to stop walking because you can't stand up long enough to learn how to walk. No, we would encourage them and they would continually take more than one and two steps. And after a while, they take three and four steps. Then they fall. Then you put them back up again. And then they start grabbing on the stuff while they was walking. And after a while, they start pulling off of stuff and pulling away from stuff. And they're standing longer. They are walking longer before they fall. And after a while, they be running while they be trying to walk because it's a process of development they get stronger as they get fed they get stronger as they keep eating they graduate from Similac breast milk Similac they go to Gerber's baby food now we grind up the food and we feed them that way and after a while they learn to take the food and eat and oftentimes they get more on them than they do in them but we don't stop them from trying because after a while they're able to eat more in their mouth than they get on themselves babies develop so I say to you new converts please don't get this preconceived misconception don't get this misnomer that even some of us that have been growing and that are somewhat grown now have been putting off on you or saying to you, you still doing that? You still crying when certain stuff happen? You still are weak and falling when certain stuff happen? Those individuals are Christians that are suffering from having spiritual amnesia. Those are the individuals that are spiritually experiencing Alzheimer's. They're forgetting all of what they used to know and what it is that brought them to where they are. So I come to set the record straight. Peter says that you will grow. You will develop. That's a process. You don't go to bed a blunder and wake up a wonder. No, this is a process. You do what is called theologically progressive sanctification. You get better day by day. You get better week by week. You get better moment by moment sometimes. You get better verse by verse. You get better the more you eat, the more you digest, the more you can see, the more you receive. You find yourself getting better and getting stronger because you're doing what Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, being confident of this very thing. He that began a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So every day you ought to get better. Every day you ought to grow better. Every day you need to walk a little better. Even my daughter in her 20s, I remember she was at the house and she ran up the steps and she stumbled. And when she stumbled, I looked at her. I said, baby, you still falling up the steps as grown as you are she said yeah daddy but not as much I just stopped by to tell you you're not sinless but you'll learn to sin less you'll get better as the days go by so Lord shape me Lord make me Lord mold me and make me into what you want me to be is there anybody out of here who has developed and being developed you're better today than you was last week you're better today than you were last month you're better today than you were last year you're better today than you were the year before because you getting better and not better you're growing up Lord, grow me, make me, mold me, shape me, develop me so that I can be more like you. Anybody here want to be like Jesus? Say yes, yes, I said yes, oh yeah.
won't he make you better? Won't he make you clean inside? Won't he shape you? Won't he change your thinking? Won't he change your emotion? Won't he change your verbiage? Because he's working on you. You keep on growing. Keep on maturing. Till the day when he comes back. And there will be no more need to mature anymore. For John said, Beloved, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons and daughters of God? But it does not yet appear what we shall be. For when we see him, we will see him as he is. And we're going to be made just like him. Yes, 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 ah, yes, ah, yes. Babies are delivered babies have desires but babies develop I pray that you will be like a baby be like a baby without remaining a baby Come on, with come on, let's bless God for the word of God. As we stand to our feet, there may be somebody in here tonight that the word of God has gone forth and has begun a work in you. There may be somebody in here tonight. You came because your cousin was being baptized or getting the right hand of fellowship, but you recognize there's a call for you to come on in. The doors of the church are open. There may be somebody right now. You already love him, but you don't have a church home and you want to come into the life of the church. Let me say this. This is the pastor of the Sharon Baptist Church. And if you're here and you want to come through here to get there, you can give your life to Christ or come down this aisle and we'll connect you with the Sharon Church or the Enon Church. We give you glory. How you are, we give you glory and our Father, you are, we give you glory and come on, say that one more time. Come on. Would you bless God for word, for message and messenger? Amen, amen. And response to the message. 
We bless and thank our God. Those of you that are before us tonight, we bless God for you and for your response to the word of God. If you're here for the very first time and have never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we're going to pray a prayer of faith that we ask you to repeat after me. If you've accepted him and you already have a relationship, but you are making this your church home, you don't need to repeat after me. I'm going to then pray a prayer rededication in your life and the person that is standing next to you is going to take you into the rear and minister to you more fully. I'm going to ask that we would bow our heads all over the building. Heavenly Father, I admit that I was a sinner, but I accept your son Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins and rose again with all power in his hands. Thank you for saving my soul. Lord, I thank you for these, our sisters who have come home, and I thank you, God, for the opportunity to love on them, to see them delivered, to see them with desire, and to see them developed. We thank you for the simple truth of the word of God, and we thank you for that deposit in our ministry tonight. And now, God, as we prepare to receive all those that have come into the life of the church and extend the right hand of fellowship, we ask, Lord, that you help us to love on them that we might be the church you've called us to be. And we'll be ever so mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. It's in the matchless, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we do pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen and amen. Would you help me bless God for these that have come? I'm going to ask that you would go to these doors. Amen. Through either of the doors. Now we're going to ask that you would take a seat and then we're going to call the names of those uh, who have joined Venon and Enon. I'm going to ask that we would prepare uh, for our time of celebration. Please don't leave until we have celebrated those that have come and then we're going to take the name of Jesus with us. We have persons who came here from as far as Puerto Rico to be here tonight and we want to honor them and we want to honor that truth. So. As the names are called, please follow the deacons and they'll set us up for the right hand of fellowship. Good evening, E9. We are so excited about baptism tonight and right-handed fellowship during Holy Week. The mo the, this is the very important week on the Christian calendar. So we will first start by welcoming our V9 members on Zoom. Members, once I call your name, please open your camera. Uh, when your name is called, please open your camera. Kristen Edwards from Toledo, Ohio. Cassandra Fanning from Tucson, Arizona. Deidre Hodge from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. E9, if we can give our V9 members a, a warm welcome tonight. Now, at this time, we will welcome our V9 members that have traveled near and far to be with us on their special night. So when I call your name, if you could just come to the front of the sanctuary, exiting the aisle from, that's closest to you from your left or your right. At this time, you can exit the center aisle. Brittany Boyd from Norfolk, Virginia. Crystal Wright from Pennsburg, Pennsylvania. Edie Boyce from Bronx, New Jersey, New York, I'm sorry. Andrea Harris from Clemington, New Jersey. And our two college students, Ayana Gaddy and Isaiah Gaddy. 
We will continue calling our newest members. If you can also exit the aisle at this time. Sierra Alston. Wanda Alston. Lorenzo Alston Jr. Brielle Robinson. Meredith Barber. Wesley Barnes. Tamoy Barrett. Lakeisha Betts. Sydney Betts. Tori Betts. Torin Betts, Evelyn Benton, Bennett, I'm sorry, Cherie Benson, Vanessa Best, Tanya Bond, Wes Bond, Marcrista Booker Jackson, Rashida Bradley, Adriana Broughton, Cameron Burrell, Danny Burrell, Khalik Butler, Herbert Campbell, Siani Campbell, Shayla Charles, Thomas Clark, Michelle Connors, Rosalind Cooper Vermont. Laura Copeland, Barbara Cunningham, Brittany Cutler, Denise Dean Smith, Leslie Dixon, Richard Dixon, Bruce Dixon Jordan, Janine Evans, Robin Finch, Abdullah Daniels, Shanna Francis, Ori Frazier, Brenda Frimpong, Tam Tam Tamara Garcia, Aiden Green, Kayla Green, Jasmine Hall, James Hamler, Natalie Hampton, Amina Harris, Teresa Harris, Tiffany Harris, Christian Harvey, Shanique Harvey, Kathy Hensford, Ava Hilliard, Bria Holden, Monica Holland, Shamir Holmes, 
Shadeen Holmes, Quadir Johnson, Mike Jones, Sarlene Jones, Stephanie Jones Price, Jocelyn Justin McCain, Shonda King, Teray Lattimore, Paige Laws, Parker Laws, Peyton Laws, Brielle Leary, Giovanna Little, Trina Little, Nicole Lundy, Lauren McMillan, Lawrence McMillan, Timothy McCleary, Aaliyah McIntosh, Camille Meekins, Whitney Middleton, Raven Miles, Iola Miller, Armani Mency, Carmelita Mency, Dale Moore, Stephen Mordecai, or Tiffany Mosley, Jordan Muse, Robin Muse, Maurice Norris, Naraya Og Oglesby Moore, Ayana Osborne Green, Jacqueline Page, Jaquan Page, Makai Page, Michael Page Sr., Peggy Pearson, Justine Penna, Joanne Pinckney, William Pinckney, Naraya Polk, Sierra Robertson, Michelle Robinson, Nasira Robinson. Kiana Rudd, Shana McMillan, Glenda, Glenda Sanders, 
April Ryan Shannon, Jere Simons Miller, Andrea Taylor, Candace Theodore, Naya Thompson, Velva Trent, Wilfredo Vangus, Craig Vaughn, Jean Claude Vilmont, Shanita Walker, Felicia Walton. Jasmine Washington, Carly West, Derek Williams, Ellen Williams, Janae Williams, Roxanne Wilmer Clark. Byron Wilson, Cynthia Wilson, Crystal Wright, James Wright, Lisa Brown, Brandy Jones, Kristen Pettiford, Roman Pinckney, Nikira Underwood, Pastor Waller, our last new member for this evening is Daisy Jensen. was not on the list. Justin, Justin and Justin Parker. We apologize that your name did not get called tonight. The Bible says in Galatians 2 and 9, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. This passage of scripture. This passage of scripture is the scriptural reference to what we call the right hand of fellowship. The right hand of fellowship is when we recognize just as Barnabas and when, when James, Cephas, and John saw that uh, Paul and Barnabas were uh, accepted into the church just as they were accepted into the church, they recognized that God had called them to the church just as he had called the others. And so we recognize that the same way we were called here, you were called here, and we welcome you. 
This tradition is simply us shaking your hand, but saying to you, we love you, we accept you, we look forward to seeing as the preacher has reminded us, all of us grow together in him and be the body of Christ. We sing some of the great hymns of the church and celebrate your presence here. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer.
he will hear and he will answer now when you feel you will know you will find oh now let us have let us tell him all he will hear Shout! 
Listen, we're not giving a benediction until Sunday afternoon. So before we get out of here, I just want you to repeat after me. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. Let it begin in me. God bless you. Somebody holler at Bishop Reed and let him know you blessed us. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer.